Good morning! It is the first day of the Tome Topple Readathon, August 2020 round. Pretty sure I've participated in Tome Topple half the time, but like not formally at all. And this time I'm participating in Tome Topple, but not just participating, I'm vlogging. So this is gonna be a pretty fun experience. If you guys are wondering why I look horrible right now, it is because I have been sick for around a week now. Or a better term for it is recovering from sickness, because I'm not as sick as I was earlier on this week. My symptoms are definitely recovering. Guys, if you're wondering, it's a common cough. I was also scared I could have had, you know. <laughs> but no, I don't exhibit the range of symptoms. I have been checking my temperature every single day. And I've also been testing it out, seeing like, you know, if my muscles have been aching or if I have a lack of appetite slash not being able to taste anything. And I have been able to taste things. And I'm so relieved because I have been freaking out all week. I've been isolating myself all week. I've been working from home because I just don't want to have it. I want to be able to have the energy to do more, but unfortunately I have not had the energy to do more. That being said, I still need to rest a little bit. I'm going to start off with my audiobook of the challenge, and I am going to listen to The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. I just feel in the mood for something Murakami, and like, I have the audiobook on Audible anyway, so this kind of works perfect for the challenge, and it's a very chunky book anyway. If I listen to it on three times speed, I will get through it in around like eight or nine hours, because that's how long this book is. So I guess without further ado, I gotta start listening. <laughs> I need a little bit of serotonin in my life, so I'm just gonna appreciate these flowers. <laughs> reading vlog update right here just before I'm going to film my seven on Sunday video. My eye makeup is done. I look like I haven't just rolled out of bed. So I actually got a fair chunk into the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. 10 hours, 39 minutes, which is pretty cool. I mean, technically I've been listening to this audiobook for under four hours right now. So yeah, it's currently around lunchtime and I am hungry, but at the very same time, I've got to film my seven on Sunday. I want to be able to film it edit it, post it within the weekend time, but also it is precious time to read. We'll see how we go with that. And on top of all of that, I have to make sure I recover before I can go back to work. Yeah, there's a lot to do this weekend, as you can tell. So I guess without further ado, I'm going to film my seven on Sunday, and then I'm going to try to edit it as quickly as I possibly can, or at least do the first draft of the edit, and then probably read some more. I might listen to the Wind Up Bird Chronicle audiobook in the times that I am not needing to listen to the audio of my video for editing purposes. If I was to to clean up my room for a little bit or if I'm like slowly packing up my lighting and everything like that I'll keep on listening to the wind up bird chronicle but after I finish editing I might just dedicate time to one of the two chunky mangas that I um put on to my TBR so maybe the first bind up of Neon Genesis Evangelion this will have volumes one to three in there or the first bind up of Vagabond which has volumes one to three but I need to read two and three which amounts to 500 pages so yeah I got two options I could either go with assassins or I can go with mechs We'll see. It's the next day. So in summary, I listened to around 19 hours of the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Someone is driving near my house and um, they might be peeking through my window. <laughs> That's too much. Gee swizz. Getting back to what I was saying, I listened to around 19 hours, really three times sped through 19 hours of the Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami, which technically means I'm this far into it. And the reason why I kept on going with the audiobook and I didn't read anything else yesterday was because my head was hurting. I'm very happy to say that I am definitely less congested. My nose, I can breathe through now and it feels kind of normal. It has been suggested to me to work from home until Wednesday, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be working from home until Wednesday. I am going to start a manga. I decided to pick up Vagabond because it was on top of Evangelion. It is number one. Hey! I have approximately around 500 pages of this bind up left and I plan to finish it today. I guess I'm going to get started on it right now.
first first bind up of Vagabond. So much to process. This is a really good story so far. So I read the first volume I'd say a couple of weeks ago. You guys would have saw it if you watched my last reading vlog. Check that out if you haven't yet. I was very much interested to seeing where it was gonna go because obviously it was an introduction and I wasn't really invested in the characters. But by volume three I'm pretty sure you'd be invested in the protagonist and how he goes about things. Wow. Thoroughly enjoying this world so far and these characters. I'm very much tempted to pick up the second bind up during this readathon but we'll see where we go. I should probably prioritize finishing most of my readathon TBR before I can consider that but it is an option as well because like I said these are pretty thick and they go well with the term topple. They do take a while to get through obviously because there's so much content. I think every single volume of manga in here is actually around 50 pages bigger than the average manga that you would buy. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the Vagabond series. I'm very much looking forward to continuing this. Uh... Yay! My mom just walked into the room. I haven't been able to leave the house and I knew that she was going to be near a bookstore and I told her because it came out this week if she could possibly pick up The Iron Daughter for me <laughs> in these new editions. Oh, it's not 500 pages, so I definitely can't include that in Term Topple. <laughs> My sister made a fort. Say hi everybody. Hi everybody. Welcome to my camp. Welcome to the camp. It happened. I finished listening to the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. So I get why this novel is very much polarized. I haven't really been talking about it on the journey because obviously, like I've mentioned a billion times in this vlog, I've been sick, yada yada yada. So I've just been listening to it while I've been either lying on my bed resting or I've been cleaning up my room. Any of you guys call me lazy just because I'm listening to an audiobook? Shut up, you ableist pizza. Even though I purchased the Wind Up Bird Chronicle on Audible, I think around a year ago, I actually did not expect to this one to be the audiobook to complete the prompt because I would have liked to read it in physical copy. I did get through it pretty quickly due to listening to it on audiobook and also having the availability and the time to listen to it, which was good. So completed two books in this time. But at the very same time, I wouldn't have been bothered if I at least tried to read this in physical copy because I have read Haruki Murakami's books in physical copy as well as sometimes reading them on audiobooks. So I'm not a stranger to either of those formats. I'm very much glad that I did listen to this on audiobook because The Wind Up Bird Chronicle is one of the hardest Murakami books to get into because it is hard to tell anybody what this plot is about. What pretty much everybody says to me going into it is just know that this is a mystery of this person trying to find a cat. Okay, now I know why they say that and nothing else because this plot is so many things. In fact, I've been told even if I was to look at the Wikipedia page, it's hard to sum up this book because there's just so much to it. This book is incredible. It is disturbing. It, you know what? There are just images that I cannot get out of my head. I'm haunted by this book. But at the very same time, it was a wild ride that was well worth it. And yes, at times, it's very much confusing when you read it. Fun fact, the original Japanese edition of The Wind Up Bird Chronicle isn't even just an edition. It's three books. And once it got translated into English, the translator literally had to take parts out of the three novels and then combine them together and then make one big novel that is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. You know what? I actually want to know what the original scenes were in the Japanese novels, but that, that's okay. Maybe we'll experience them one day. Even though it was physically hard to read anything yesterday, I'm so happy that I started listening to The Wind Up Bird Chronicle and I completed it today. I think that this is a perfect rainy day read. I mean, it's literally rainy out there at the moment. Also, if you are under the weather like myself, if you want to pick up a Murakami book, don't pick up The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. <laughs> Probably pick up something a bit more simple like Norwegian Wood or maybe even After the Quake. Just don't pick up The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. <laughs> Day two of the term topple is looking like a victory. Happy Monday, everyone. I'm working from home, but what I'm gonna do in my afternoon break is start Furyborn. You can tell I was sick because I called it Furyborn.
not King's Bane. Hopefully continue as much as I possibly can until I'm finished it because this boy is almost 600 pages and I've wanted to complete King's Bane for a while, at least since I read Furyborn recently. And I also found another manga alternative if I decide to read something light, fluffy, kind of contemporary-esque, and that is the first bind-up volume of Orange. I've had this on my shelf for a couple of years now and I've wanted to get to it for a while and I might add it to my Tome Topple TBR if I feel like reading something light, but if I want to stick to my fantasy, sci-fi, slash mech manga, then yeah, I'll uh, stick with my current TBR picks at the moment. Perfect. guys, I'm here to update you. Yes, that's right, my hair is wet. I just came out of the shower, so that's why it's looking all flat right now. I'll give you a summary of where I'm up to with King's Bay. Yeah, that's right, I got that far into it. I ended up reading some during my lunch break and then reading some after work. Let's just say that, yes, this series is like full on slow burn, but it is so worth it. Very much looking forward to what's gonna happen at the end of King's Bay. Yet, I actually just don't wanna know. I just kinda don't wanna finish it because it is too good. Very enjoyable. I guess that's my update with King's Bane. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday. I don't look too bad for rolling out of bed. But literally where I left off yesterday, I did not continue reading. Almost straight after I filmed my vlog update, myself and Camillo started watching One Piece. Yes, I'm back around here near the flowers. I forgot to mention that Camillo bought these for me on the weekend. It was just a get well gift and it's so beautiful and I'm just so appreciative. Like, I love you, baby. <laughs> I am going to start working from home and then I will continue on with Kingsbane. That will be the third book that I finish in Tome Topple. Can we do it? Let's see. Okay, part of this vlog is going to be praising Bay once again. Around two months ago, Camillo decided to buy me a gift and it took a while for the store to get any stock, but they finally did and it finally came. He was so worried that he was never gonna come. I think we're both relieved. I feel so loved and appreciated because he bought me Nezuko, who is one of the main characters of Demon Slayer, which is one of my favorite mangas and anime. And I just wanted to mention it because it came in the mail today. I'm obsessed with looking at this beautiful Nezuko. Let's show you some footage of reading. Wow, I had a really good run. <laughs> that was one heck of a lunch break. <laughs> I mean, technically, of course, it's my break, but I didn't eat lunch. It's okay, I can eat while I work. That's the glory of working from home, I guess. Oh, this is so good. I mean, I was expecting this book to be good, but like, not this good. I am so shocked at how gripped I am and how determined I am to continue on with this story. Now, I know I might have said previously in this vlog that I'm taking it easy, you know, to recover and stuff, but I'm already feeling fine. Maybe King's Bane is having that effect on me. <laughs> I think I really want to finish this book today. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I technically have half the book left. I obviously have to finish work before I do that. So I guess tonight I will do some sort of a binge read for this book and we'll see how far we go. I'm just really looking forward to seeing this all through. People have warned me that there's a cliffhanger ending. Thank you to those people who have because I don't know how I would be able to survive if I didn't know that and if I was to just continue on with this book. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm hit with a cliffhanger and I don't know what to do. I really don't want the series to end. It is so good. And even though a lot of the booktubers that I watch sing its praises, I still don't think it gets praised enough.
all I feel is pain right now. I know I needed to finish this today because I needed to know what happened. Also, I didn't really want to take this on public transport when I go back to work tomorrow, but pain. I don't know if I would be even more shocked or heartbroken or maybe even publicly display it if I was on public transport reading this, but I'm actually happy that I binge read it at home. And also, I have a question for G Swizz back in 2018. What is it that you didn't like about Fury Born before? It's like you didn't get the hype. Well, <laughs> you should. I think that's the coolest thing about the series is that as much as you can predict where it's gonna go because obviously you're told based on these prophecies, you still just don't know what you're gonna get. And that's how I felt with Kingsbane. I am so mad at this book, but at the very same time, it's a 5 out of 5 star read. Kingsbane wasn't necessarily just to get points for Tome Topple, like this book was genuinely gripping. I could have saved this for some time later down in the week, but no, I had to read it almost straight after work. That's what I did. I was just so mind blown. How Claire Legrand is able to craft this world, to craft these characters, it makes me feel like these characters have been there for more than two books. That's how I feel. I I love it when an author can make you feel that attached to characters. I'm genuinely amazed. And guys, I am obviously like blushing and flustered. I think I just need a standalone before I get to another series that I invest in because I invested myself in Kingsbane. I'm not too sure if I'm ready to read Neon Genesis Evangelion because the Evangelion anime literally broke me and Kingsbane literally broke me. I need a little bit of a break in between and it's probably gonna be The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Just a reminder to everyone, I did mention this in my Tome Topple TBR. My edition of The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern is 502 pages, so it counts as a tome. I know that some people are watching this right now who love The Night Circus and are like, that is not a tome. My edition counts as a tome. <laughs> in our house. <laughs> guys, we have two bathrooms here. I didn't give you a morning update. The reason why I didn't give you a morning update is because last night after finishing Kingsbane, I couldn't sleep almost the entire night because for the first time in a week, I had caffeine and I think I had too much. <laughs> I slept for one hour last night. <laughs> Wow. So as I'm talking right now, I've just finished work. Um, oh, I forgot to take my copy of The Night Circus in the bathroom with me. Wow. I'm around halfway through The Night Circus. And I know what you guys might be thinking. Jeez, but it's like halfway through a 500 page book. And like, you know, I mean, this contradicts what I said earlier. Even though it's a 500 page book, it's still a pretty short 500 page book. It's small in size. So compared to the other terms that I read, it is kind of easier. But that being said, I'm really powering through it. And the reason why I'm powering through it is because I I feel like I'm motivated enough to continue on until tomorrow because tomorrow I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that much reading done. Yes, I have a day off tomorrow, but it's a day off for completely other reasons in general. Very much looking forward to finishing off the night circus. I'm gonna try to finish off the night circus before I rest my well-deserved rest after having one hour of sleep last night or really this morning. I fell asleep at 6 a.m. and woke up at 7. <laughs> So, finished 
the night circus. At the moment, I'm a little bit flustered, not gonna lie. One hour sleep gang. This book has been on my TBR since the very beginning. I'm pretty sure I got Goodreads at the end of 2014. You know how you've got the Goodreads TBR and you can see what is like the highest up on the TBR? The night circus has been number two on the TBR since I got Goodreads. I mean that the very earliest books that you put on your to be read list on Goodreads, they usually start from one and then later on descend. Now I'm up to like what 250, so yeah, I've got like heaps on there. But The Night Circus has always been number two on there. I read this 500 page version because you know it's a mass market paperback. This is like the lightest book ever, so I actually don't mind mass market paperbacks, even though I don't like them on my shelf. I don't mind reading them, and I liked my version of The Night Circus is kind of a mass market paperback, but also a very pretty one very unique one. This one I'm pretty sure is out of print. Is it worth the hype? Yeah, it's worth the hype. I definitely see its merit. I definitely see why people love the Night Circus so much and why it is a favorite for them. Was it one of my favorites? Not necessarily, but do I like it better than Carnival? Because Carnival was the thing that kind of turned me off from this. Greatest Showman is something I enjoy, but that's pretty much it. Like the circus never really has appealed to me. Whereas The Night Circus is a pretty compelling story, even to those people who aren't really fans of circusy fictions or going to the circus in general. I guess I would have to recommend it to someone who wants to try something new. I like the competitive aspects to it. I loved the romance aspects to it. I think I'm a sucker for <laughs> that kind of romance. So that is kind of the reason why I really liked it. If that romance wasn't in there, I just think it, would, it was okay. It was okay, but I live for the romance. I gave this one around a four to five stars and I cannot believe I started and finished the night circus in a day, especially a work day. I find myself being able to concentrate on books better on public transport. Today, I used my breaks for public transport <laughs> and I spent the rest of the night essentially finishing the night circus. I don't know what else I'm gonna read this week, but what I do know is that you guys are in for, I'd say date night footage, like probably some bookstore footage because I know you guys eat that up. Happy Thursday, everyone. If I do happen to get through another book today or at least start another book, it's gonna be Jade City by Fonda Lee. I've mentioned to you guys that I've wanted to read this one. In fact, I actually expected it to be the first one I read in this vlog. So hopefully I will get to it. But yeah, today is pretty much gonna be a very busy day. When you ask your mom to buy Sonic for you, is Sonic at home? <laughs>
everyone, it is Friday. I managed to get a good Chung Fru Jade City yesterday. Surprisingly, being that I had a lot to do, I mean, I couldn't obviously show what I was doing in my vlog, but I had to get a few documents updated by government sources, pretty much for visa purposes. So that's what I had to do yesterday. That's why I had to take the day off. Hopefully I can finish it by the end of this vlog, but if I don't, it will carry on to next week. I will be on the way to work. Hi everyone, it's been a few hours since I last read. I didn't actually expect to get far today considering that I have been working today. Lunch break, I was able to read 100. So now I have around 150 pages left of this edition. I do have to say that Jade City is a really good book so far. I notice all my friends give it a five out of five stars, but I might even just give it a four out of five stars. Of course, in the last 150 pages, it really shows up. But I noticed that there's a lot of hype surrounding this book. I can't be mad. It's actually a pretty good book. I'm going on date night again. And I know what you're thinking. Jeez whiz, didn't you go on date night yesterday? Let me explain why we went on date night yesterday and today. Camilla's a cutie. I was sick last week and he said, well, we'll go another time to make up for the fact that you were sick last Friday. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it's Thursday and Friday. Like, are you sure you want to go both days? And he was like, yeah, it's worth it. And so yeah, we went on Thursday. <laughs> He's adorable. Um, and I'm very much happy to spend time with him. So yeah, I'm excited for date night tonight. And hopefully I can show you a little bit more fun stuff before I end this vlog today. Cars? We don't really have cars at home. Cars at home?
Saturday, which means it's officially the second week of the term topple. So what I've got to do right now is wrap up the first week and then start the second week vlog for you guys. Before I do so, I did show some bookstore footage to you guys and you guys might be wondering, what did we purchase? We released our inner weebs and um, we pretty much got all of this and that bag that just dropped. I'll get to the bag soon, but on Thursday night when Camillo and I went to Kinnikinia, he bought volume five of the Overlord light novels and he's wanted to collect these for a very long time. This is one of his favorite series ever. And due to border closure, it's kind of rare that we get to see these in bookstores. While they're there, usually we at least collect one or two so that he can eventually have the full collection. That's one thing that he got. And then on Thursday night, he also bought So I'm a Spider, So What, a volume three. This is another light novel series that Camillo absolutely loves loves and he's wanted to start collecting the manga. This is a good way for me to also get into this series. I have to be honest, I did post a Goodreads review where I just thought the first one was okay. It wasn't the greatest thing I ever read, but I'm very much looking forward to getting into this series because he also mentioned to me that the first book isn't that great. So if I push through the first two volumes of the manga and then maybe get to the third, which I think starts with the second book plot, then I might just enjoy myself while reading it. On Thursday when I went to Kinnikinia with him, obviously because I'm trash, but the next two Demon Slayer volumes I didn't have. I actually was planning to go there to buy the rest of them. So I was planning to buy up to volume 15, but volume 14 and volume 15 were not in stock. So I got volume 12 and volume 13 at Kinnikinia. I am planning to binge read the series like crazy. That's after the term topple because right now I've got to prioritize terms. A manga that Camilla was just about to buy and start collecting, but he realized he should save his money because the Overlord hardbacks are pretty expensive. I decided to buy for him or not even just for him. For me too because I had just finished the first season of this anime this week and I pretty much inhale watched it. It was amazing. The problem is the story hasn't been completed or resolved and so I need to know more. So I would love to read the manga. The Land of the Lustrous. If you haven't checked out this anime yet, please do. It is a masterpiece. But if you want more from the story, I think that the manga is going to help you with that because I want more for the story. <laughs> I ended up dropping into Dimix because Kinnikinia was not helpful in this department. And what do you know? My Dimmick's card, I had an $8 credit. So it was just a perfect opportunity to actually purchase the final two volumes of Demon Slayer that are out. Volume 14 and volume 15, I officially have, which means I am currently up to date. I'm just looking forward to binge read all of them. After we went to Kinnikinia again yesterday night, you know, for our double date week, Camillo bought the next volume of So I'm a Spider, So What? I feel like every single time we go into Kinnikinia now and we are wanting to collect a series, we have to pick up at least one volume of a certain manga series. Like, it's just obligatory. Like we don't just walk in there to browse. No, we have to continue on with our shrine. And the manga that I purchased at Kinnikinia yesterday was The Land of the Lustrous Volume 2 because I already know that I like this series. I'm not just blindly buying manga. What if you guys might also be thinking like, am I getting tired of buying like actual young adult fiction books or actual fantasy books that have nothing to do with manga? And the answer is yes. In fact, I did purchase a book this week. Purchased it from Angus and Robinson, Australia and it arrived literally two days afterwards. Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. If you guys don't know, this is the spinoff to The Remnant Chronicles and I know what a lot of you guys might be thinking. Gee Swiss, you haven't even read The Remnant Chronicles yet. No, I haven't. However, my first binge read vlog is going to be for The Remnant Chronicles. But I didn't just collect this because I assumed that I'd like The Remnant Chronicles. No. I started to consider even if I don't like The Remnant Chronicles, this is a completely different story and that's what I've been told. Very much looking forward to actually reading this series. I could read it for Tome Topple because it's over 500 pages, but I want to read The Remnant Chronicles first and the first two Remnant Chronicles books are not tomes. Now we're going to go into the wrap up. Here are the stack of books I completed, not really completed. Jade City has not been completed. Jade City will be going into the next week's vlog. Let's see what challenges they complete. So let's start with Vagabond. This edition is 728 pages. It completes the two challenges to read one tome and read a tome that you recently acquired. I did recently purchase this one. That counts for that. Book number two that I completed was The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. Sorry if that was loud. The page count in this edition is 609 pages. This book completes the challenges to read a standalone tome and um, to listen to a tome audiobook. That's what I did with The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. The third book I finished in Tome Topple was King's Bane by Claire Legrand. On Goodreads, it says that this edition is like 632 pages, but I don't actually think that it is. In this edition, it says it's around 580, 590. Regardless, it's a tome. And this also counts as like kind of a recently acquired tome. It actually does doesn't complete any new challenges. But this is the tome that I am so happy that I finished during Tome Topple because it's definitely the best book I read during Tome Topple so far. I have not recorded this one on my Twitter yet. The Night Circus 
by Erin Morgenstern. This edition is 502 pages, which means that it is just a tome. I finished this one so quickly because the font is not even that small. The chapters are so small. I tend to go through books very quickly if their chapters are very short. That's why Jade City I'm also breezing through as well. This completes the challenge of the tome that has been on your TBR for the longest. And this also completes the challenge of reading a tome in a genre that you don't usually read. I know that this could count as like magical realism and stuff, but when it comes to magical realism, I don't tend to go to any circusy books at all. The circus isn't necessarily my thing, not necessarily the thing that I go to the most. That's what I would count this towards because this isn't a book that I've been inclined to read for a very long time. I've owned this book literally since 2014 or 2015. It has been on my TBR for that long because I've just been putting it off, but I enjoyed it. And finally, I have around 150 pages of Jade City and I will talk about that journey within the next blog. I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask how I did it. I don't know, I'm just in readathon mode right now. I swear, after I finish this readathon, I don't know how I'm gonna function. I think it's because I'm just a super competitive reader. That is gonna be it for this video today, book lovers. If you enjoyed the vlog that you watched today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already and stay tuned for week number two. I also have social medias. I'm at GSwizzleBooks on Twitter and Instagram and I'm also at Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash GSwizzle. I love you book lovers and I will see you later. Peace.